When it comes to drawing conclusions about student learning, no one is more qualified than the classroom teacher. This year, teachers have done an amazing job translating their craft to meet the challenges of our disrupted lives, and we love them for it. The fact is that regardless of how they are able to interact with their students, educators' pedagogical practices still center on determining what we want students to know, how we will collect evidence of that learning, and what can be done in response to that evidence to make the learning continuous. And you know what? The multiple choice test was never the one and only way to do this. Projects and performance tasks have always been the primary method for engaging students so that teachers can draw conclusions about deeper learning. Write a thing, make a thing, plan a thing, discuss a thing. There's a lot that a teacher or team of teachers can determine about learning when the cognitive complexity of the task is more challenging than what can be asked in a multiple choice question. A varied assessment methodology that combines activities that range from formal to informal is vital for continuous learning, and data from multiple forms of measurement should be available for analysis in one place. And because of this, I am super excited to introduce Rubric Assessments in AWARE. My PLC team and I are so excited to launch rubrics and AWARE with our students. We adapted the performance tasks on our previous Unit 1 success plan to be beneficial for both our in-person and distance learners. To create a truly varied assessment that we can use both formatively and summatively, we have embedded multiple methods of demonstrating knowledge. Students will have the opportunity to select from a variety of products. When our team developed this rubric, in addition to the activities we designed, we also referenced the TEA performance level descriptors. This helped us to develop a way to reliably score students as they initially complete or even resubmit their learning artifacts. Now that our rubric has been developed and shared with the team, we are ready to engage students in an authentic learning cycle. At the start of our unit, we want to ignite prior knowledge and ask students to collaborate in small groups to complete a series of stations. As students progress through these stations at different rates, I am collecting information on their individual levels of performance. After three days of learning, my team is ready to input our first set of data for performance task one, which is to recognize the components of atoms. In one of my classes, I have noticed that some learners are ready to advance while others have demonstrated a need for targeted intervention. Our team has used this data collection in a formative manner and decided to incorporate an additional teacher demonstration as an extra form of input for our students. We hope that this guided learning experience will create a richer student output for our second performance task where students will be creating atomic models. Before my next PLC meeting, I take time to rescore any students from my targeted small group intervention. I am then also able to score students on our second performance task. In all of our classrooms, we have been able to record examples of student growth within our Unit 1 lessons. Small adjustments for pacing and independent student practice with feedback were made to our instructional plans as we begin our final learning cycle. The final task students are expected to perform for Unit 1 requires that students are applying knowledge from earlier in the unit. We are also asking students to produce an original artifact, such as a composition or a podcast to communicate like a scientist. Since students are completing tasks at their own pace, I have decided to examine the progress of individual students. Over the course of this unit, Liam has performed well. 
He's completed tasks early and supported his peers. I will provide feedback so that he can move from meets grade level to master's grade level on this final task. Hello there. My name is Wade Labai and I'm with Lead Forward. I have the pleasure of introducing an exciting new tool and feature we've added to the Lead Forward data module in Edufori Aware, student performance rubrics. There are two primary rubric templates. One is designed for all grades in math, science, and social studies, and another design is for reading. The rubrics were designed to help teachers assess student work or evidence of learning that would not come from using a multiple choice or selected response test. So let's look at some of the design features, starting with the math, science, and social studies rubric. The gold bar at the top informs the purpose of the rubric. With each column, we are evaluating students from a more dependent state of learning or replicating what was taught to more independence and application of learning. Looking at the rows of the rubric, you may notice a familiar process content process design. Process standards that make up the tools to know category are listed first. Looking at these descriptions, we are focusing on how much help, if any, the student might need to get started with the task. Next, we have the content section. Here we have the descriptions that align with our state assessment and accountability system regarding understanding and application of content. And finally, we have process standards ways to show, where we evaluate students' ability to demonstrate their learning. Now, reading actually has two versions of the rubric. The first is for grades K through two, and another version for grades three through high school. Reading rubrics focus primarily on process, so using a variety of texts, we can evaluate students before, during, and after reading in one or more categories. Tools to know, ways to show, and author's craft. Reading rubrics may be utilized in segments or over time, depending on the task or assessment selected. So how does all of this apply to the new tool in Edgephoria? The first step is to create an assessment or task for students with applicable student expectations. Remember, each row of the rubric equates to one item, so this math example would only have three total items. So in a fourth grade introduction to decimals unit, we might choose tools to know process standards 4.1a and 4.1b, and then select 4.4a as our content SE. And we then finish with 4.1F as the ways to show process standard. The next step is going into AWARE and creating the assessment using the established Lead Forward template. And finally, we would score each student on a numerical scale of one to four for each item. The resulting report would allow teachers to see each student listed in the selected column for each item. This is a great way to analyze the levels of support or intervention needed for each student according to their performance on each category of the rubric. Thank you so much for all you do, and please reach out with any questions you may have on this exciting new tool. And we're gonna actually go to the report section just like you would for any other report. So pretend in your mind, you've been giving student performance rubrics to your students, okay? Eighth grade social studies class, because that's what I taught, that's what I built my demo for. Uh, we're gonna actually click on the student performance rubric report. I'm an eighth grade teacher. I log in, I click on this, I pick eighth grade, I pick social studies because that's what I taught. I pick all, instead of all students, let's actually pick um, just one class period of students. That first one there, yep, yeah, that's the one. And then you say select assessments. Now you might have three or four of these by the end of the year. I've got one, American Revolution student performance rubric. I say show report and that's it. That's all it takes to generate this report. That's the exact same report you were looking at a PDF sample of earlier. So this is it. And if you go print this page, you can actually print this in landscape or portrait if you wanna actually get a, a, a printed copy of this. But um, as lead forward, uh, you don't have to generate the report on your own. You just gotta build and administer the test.